Hello and welcome to a new video of Scores Originals. Today I'm going to talk about shot selection. Shot selection about a particular area in the court, which is the three-quarter court area on the backhand side for the right-handed players. So it's the left side of the court. What shots do I use during a match? Um, and what can I expect from my opponent after I hit these shots? Uh, let's get into it. So why is it so important to have a, a set amount of shots in a particular area of the court? Uh, what I find handy during my match is that I have to think less about what I'm going to do and use three shots uh, alternately uh, of each other, obviously thinking about uh, or recognizing my position of my opponent um, when I'm uh, about to hit my shot. Um, but I already have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to do uh, when I see the ball coming. This also helps with recognizing patterns in play. So if I use the same three shots over and over, my opponent will have to decide what to do after these shots. And playing different opponents, I will learn uh, after each shot what is handy, uh, what, is my, what I have to be wary of, and how I can counter the next shot. So we're gonna talk about the three-quarter area of the court. The three shots uh, we're gonna talk about are the straight drive, the attacking boast and a straight kill. One of my go-to shots after my opponents hit uh, a ball in the three-quarter area of the court is a straight drive. Um, for me, a straight drive is almost always a good option because it leaves less angle for my opponent to work with. Important when I hit this shot is, especially when it's in the three-quarter area of the court, is that I get behind the ball quickly for making a decision what shot I'm gonna play, but also uh, creating a bit of deception. So deception can be used by your um, racket preparation, but also by uh, quick footwork. The quicker you get onto the ball, um, the quicker you're ready, the more options you have uh, for executing your next shot. So get behind the ball quickly, and doing this, what is important is that you go with the ball and not after the ball. So my first step will be with my left foot and get behind the ball quickly. What I find important with my straight drive is that I use enough height. What I want to be wary of when my opponent hits a, a shorter drive from here, uh, in the corner of my eye I'm going to see if he's going to uh, continue to the T or that he's going to stay a little bit behind me. Um, if my opponent uh, recognizes his loose shot, because I think when he leaves the ball short, it's a loose shot. Uh, in that instant, I would recover quicker to the tee than, than usual and see if I can hunt the volley. So I'm expecting my opponent hitting the short drive, after hitting the short drive, to go to the tee quicker than usual, seeing if he can maybe uh, get onto the volley. What I'm gonna do now is making sure he cannot volley the next shot with my straight drive, which means I'm gonna use height on the front wall, um, depending, obviously, on how short his shot is. The shorter it is, the lower I can hit it, or maybe uh, more attacking. The deeper it is, sometimes a ball is in this area and also can die in the back corner. So I have to make sure I get behind it quickly and then use height, staying out of the volley of my opponent, so I can um, still dominate the T area of the court. Obviously, it is possible that my opponent is uh, able to volley this, this shot, because my execution of the shot might be not good enough. Um, what happens then, so say I play the drive, and yes, my opponent uh, took a quicker route to the tee, and sees an opportunity to play a volley here. Um, he has a few obvi options, obviously. Um, I think a straight drive is safe for him, but I just came from this area of the court, so I'm not sure um, that he's gonna do that. I do feel, because he took control over the tee, um, maybe to play a shorter shot, and he, he, he can do two things, I think. One is play a volley boast, which could be a good shot if I'm out of position. So let's say I hit the drive, I'm not quick enough back, he plays the volley boast, um, so I have to go to this area of the court, but he does leave the right side open. So I'm not sure if this, this is the best option for him. Um, 
what I'm going to be wary of is a volley drop. So if I hit the drive and he comes in front of me and plays a volley drop shot, now I have a more awkward movement to the front of the court um, and limited options because he g doesn't give me much angle to work with. Um, depending on how good his drop shot is, if it's a very good drop shot, I will probably play a counter drop. Uh, if it's a less good drop shot, I might be on it quickly and play an attacking cross court uh, to the sixth corner. We even a hard deep cross court. Um, a lob could be safe. It's all about getting control of the tee again. But this is damage control if my drive, which should be out, out of reach of the volley of my opponent, uh, is being mis-executed by me. Um, if I do it well, my opponent probably will not be able to volley the shot and I keep control of the tee. My second go-to option uh, after my opponent hits a ball in the three-quarter area of the court uh, from the back is uh, attacking boast. Why is pro most of the times when my opponent hits a drive on the back but leaves it short is that he also stays in the back of the court a bit. He, he keeps hanging in the back. Um, so if I see this in the corner of my eye and I get behind the ball quickly and I see my opponent still here, there's a lot of open space in the front area of the court which I can attack now. So I'm gonna play a boast and recover the tee. My opponent has to be quick on the ball in the front area of the court and, and has probably limited options. If he's late on the ball, he probably will not have power to hit to the back. So I'm gonna be wary for a short shot, maybe a trickle bows, maybe a, uh, a little uh, counter drop. Once that is being played, I'm gonna get on it quickly and hit it to the back as, as quick as possible uh, to put him under a lot of pressure. So what I'm gonna think about when I'm hitting the attacking boast is where to hit it on the front wall. And what I think is a good marker on the front wall is in the middle of the court, just above the tin, making sure the ball will bounce twice before getting to the side wall. So giving my opponent uh, limited options for his next shot. My third option in the three quarter area of the court will be a straight kill, uh, but this is quite a risky shot. So make sure you practice this before you execute this in a match. Um, what I do is when the ball bounces in the service box area and it's probably too low to volley, that's why it's gonna bounce. Um, this is the moment I'm gonna hit a kill shot. It's not the ball when it's dying in the back, the drive is dying in the back or it's uh, bouncing in the back of the service box. This is probably a ball which is really short uh, where I can get behind the ball quickly and my opponent has less time uh, to go, go back to the tee, so I see an opening in the, er uh, in the left front area of the court. I'm not gonna hit this ball necessarily hard, but I wanna keep it low. I wanna uh, be able to hit two bounces before the short line. So, um, important here, it's all about uh, getting behind the ball quickly and executing your shot the moment you see it coming. So, you see it's staying short in the service box, get behind it quickly, hit it straight, kill and uh, recover the tee. Uh, your opponent now probably has to dig deep into, the, uh, into this area of the court and has limited options. A drive probably is out of the question unless you left it uh, bouncing up. Uh, I think a straight drop is probably a good option for him. A trickle boast is possible, but leaving the right area of the court um, open. So. What I would do if my opponent hits this is probably hit a little topspin drop shot, but knowing that um, I can expect this, I'll probably be on it quickly and maybe attack the right side area of the court. Depending on my uh, recovery to the tee of my opponent. So if he hits his drop shot and make this movement, I know uh, that area is open. If he can reach in and come back, um, Maybe a cross court is risky. So what I would do then probably is hit a, another counter drop or a cross court lob and start to rally over. Important to say is that these three options um, are not necessarily winning shots. These are most of the times working shots. So um, it's, I think it's a good thing to have three basic shots uh, to go to 
whenever the uh, opportunity arises uh, to hit, but not necessarily to win the rally. It would be an, a bonus if you do, obviously, uh, but always knowing it's a basic shot, which means uh, you tend not to make too many mistakes on them. Practice them a lot. Um, so the straight drive using the height, the attacking boast, attacking the middle of the front wall, so making sure the ball bounces twice before the side wall and the straight kill. Invest in basic shots, so making less errors during a match, knowing what to do when the opportunity arises during the rally, uh, making your opponent work uh, more than winning the rally, and knowing uh, by executing these shots in the rally, learning from your opponent what they do after these shots and counter on them. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Kalina, for helping me out. Um, hopefully you've learned a, a little bit about uh, shot selection today. Let me know in the comments your thoughts uh, or any questions and hopefully see you next time.